Good morning. My name is Mark Crawford. I'm the Energy Sales Manager for Central Soda Cooperative. We are a propane supplier through a large portion of central Minnesota with our main office in Buffalo, Minnesota. You are all invited to this webinar today because you operate your business within our service area, and we'd like to earn the opportunity to work with you in the future if you decide to move forward with propane auto gas. I'd like to start by saying thank you uh, to you who are joining us today. I'm excited that you're interested to learn more about propane auto gas and what it can do for you and your business. When it comes to automotive in, to the automotive industry, we hear a lot of phrases like going green, reduced carbon footprint, environmentally friendly, one fuel option we don't hear much about as a way of addressing these phrases is propane auto gas and how it is, this option is clean, cost effective, and readily available. So the purpose of this webinar today is to provide an education on what is what is propane auto gas, how does it work in school buses, and does it make sense to add it to your fleet. With the presenters we have today and the resources we have online, um, for the meeting today, we should be able to answer all your questions and provide an avenue for your next step if you're interested in moving forward and learning more. So let's start uh, with a quick introduction of our, our presenters today. Then we'll get started with our presentations. So if I can uh, have start with Mark, if you want to do a quick or introduction of yourself, we'll move to Derek and then to Chris. You bet. Good morning, everyone. Glad you are able to join us. Uh, Mark Porth is my name. Uh, I'm a senior account manager for CHS Incorporated, uh, CHS Inc. And we are uh, one of the largest wholesalers of propane in the country. Uh, I have the opportunity also being the subject expert for autogas. Uh, and so pretty excited to be able to chat with you today. And uh, hopefully we can answer a bunch of your questions. Derek? Thank you very much. Good to be amongst friends and partners. My name is Derek Whaley. I work for Roush Cleantech. I do business development for them. I've uh, been with Roush for about 11 years. Uh, so ever since I graduated college, I have been involved in alternative fuels before it was mainstream like what it is today and uh, been a part of a very, very special, special ride of uh, watching clean American sustainable energy affect all forms of transportation. But my personal favorite is transporting our uh, our world's most precious cargo. And uh, on a side note, I work for Chris Weirs and very, very happy to do it. Chris, I'll, uh, I'll give it to you, brother. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for having me. Uh, Chris Weirs, North Central Bus Sales, been with the company for about 28 years. I've been working quite a bit with the propane for the last 12 or so. It's been a lot of fun to watch this develop uh, from just something that was almost a new, a new, an old concept that was new again to uh, to being a, a big part of our business today. So um, to our our partnerships, uh, especially with Roush, um, we've just seen tremendous growth and acceptance of this product and uh, excited to have everyone here to learn a little bit more about this today. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Well, let's go ahead and get started with our presentations. Uh, we're going to go start with Mark. And uh, then we'll go to Chris, or excuse me, Mark, and then to Derek. Uh, we'll close us out here. So, all right, let's get our presentation showing up here. All right, very good. Hopefully everyone can see that slide. And so again, my name is Mark Porth, uh, and I'm just going to kind of do a level set on on what propane is. Uh, we all know it as a as an incredible energy for cooking our steaks on our back grill uh, on the deck, uh, but it does so many more things than that. Uh, and to begin with, let's just start with a with a short little video that kind of level sets and and why we're here today. And so. I don't think the video is working. Did it not show on your side? It does not. It did not, Chris. Uh, there we go. Here it is. There we go.
So good deal. What uh, what is propane? Propane is uh, is a domestically produced, uh, clean, affordable, American made product uh, that is truly 100% produced right here in these United States. Uh, it's a byproduct of the natural gas processing and also off the refining process as well. Uh, commonly used for space heating. We all know that it's a great energy for uh, making hot water and keeping our homes warm. Um, makes amazing meals as you use a, a gas cooktop. Um, but as Derek said, it's an emerging fuel uh, for our engines to be able to help reduce the carbon footprint. And so let's take a little quick look and see exactly what propane is. Um, propane is literally three carbons and eight hydrogens. They wrap together and make propane. Uh, so we are truly a stable hydrogen with a very low carbon footprint uh, in comparison to the amount of hydrogen that is available to us. It is non-toxic, uh, cannot contaminate the air, uh, will not pool or puddle on the soil or uh, contaminate water resources. And the cool part of it is, and probably most emerging technology is that it is becoming renewable. Um, but as you can see, the molecules below uh, on the left down there at the bottom is gasoline. Uh, and then the diesel molecules with all the blue dots are the carbon mo molecules that those two energy sources are having to deal with. Uh, to where propane, we simply don't have them. We uh, reduce particulate matter to virtually zero, uh, a 96% reduction in uh, NOx emissions versus diesel, and are certified to be operating at 0.02. Um, and I believe the latest tailpipe emissions off the Bluebird bus is 0.01 NOx in a full duty cycle. That's from you know setting idling through running down the highway. Um, also, it's great to always talk about greenhouse gases and our 25% reduction in that. Um, these aren't just our maths and our, our numbers. Uh, these are proven by the West Virginia uh, University, who is the same folks who uh, caught and was able to um, have VW uh, through their settlement uh, to be able to make dollars available for diesel reduction also. Real quick look at the uh, at carbon intensity. Uh, conventional propane from east to west, north to south in the United States is somewhere around 80 uh, versus the electric grid, which is around 139. If you take the average of all those down here where I live in Missouri, uh, we are well over 200 uh, because the majority of our energy for electricity comes from coal. Now, I love electricity in certain manners. Uh, air conditioning is a wonderful thing. I like lights. I like to be able to flip the switch. But uh, every energy source has its place. And, uh, and maybe electricity or battery powered may not be the right spot uh, if you're looking for the way to power your school bus. I like this slide because it shows uh, just our true efficiencies. For propane, uh, from the moment that it's uh, produced to the time that it is used, it is 87% efficient through that whole process. Compared to electricity, from the moment that it is extracted, uh, whether that be coal or whatever it may be, uh, to the time that it finally ends up at, at it, uh, the source using that power, it loses 68% of its energy uh, is just simply lost, only 32% efficient. So let's talk real quick about refueling. Uh, you got to have propane to do that. And so here's a real quick chart of inventories uh, and where we stand today. Uh, as you can see, the uh, the yellow line is, is our propane. So we are running at the very top of the five-year average for inventories. Uh, we produce somewhere around 2.5. Uh, six to, to 2.8 million barrels per day of propane. Uh, to put that into gallons, it's somewhere around 118 million gallons a day is produced. And the large portion of that, 70% of that, has to leave by exports going to other places uh, where it's being turned into plastic and other, uh, other molecules that will somewhat turn around and come back to us at Christmas time in the shape of a toy kind of a deal. And so um, so we have plenty of propane available to us. 
here on in these uh, in these states. Uh, here's a real quick chart of what to expect for your auto gas prices. Um, as you can see, uh, varying across the country, we're somewhere in the uh, sub $2 range, and that will vary based on your location. But uh, somewhere in that under $2 should be what you should expect for your auto gas price. What does the dispenser look like? This is a, uh, a very nice little dispenser. Um, this would have a card reader on it to where I could swipe my credit card and be able to fill my pickup with propane auto gas very simply and easily. You can see that it takes up a very small footprint. Basically, we need a large parking spot, uh, 12 foot wide, 25 foot long uh, with crash protection and uh, prefer three phase power if possible, but we don't even have to have power. We can power this dispenser off of a propane generator that would pull the fuel straight off the tank that's uh, that you see sitting there. A couple other options. This is a, uh, a larger setup. I believe this setup is for a, a school district that's running around uh, 50 to 60 school buses. So two different, uh, two different tanks there to where they're able to load multiple or uh, refill multiple buses at the same time. Uh, this also has fuel management on it to where we're tracking uh, what bus, uh, what driver, uh, the gallons used, all those things. So if you want to be and have a very smart dispenser, uh, we can do those also readily available. And as your fleet grows, uh, we can grow with you extremely easily to expand. Uh, this would be a transport size delivery uh, to where we're bringing in large semis of your propane, which also helps with the cost of your auto gas. So one of the greatest things that has happened recently is the K-15 Quick Connect nozzle. Um, this nozzle is all over the world other than in the United States. And so in the last couple of years, it has arrived here in the States. Uh, the great part about this nozzle is if this person was to squeeze them, that handle currently uh, with the dispenser running behind him, no fuel would, uh, would be dispensed out the nozzle until it engages onto that brass piece that looks like a big air chuck. Uh, until he engages the, the K-15 into that nozzle um, and engages the handle, then it locks onto the vehicle and dispenses at 8 to 12 gallons per minute. And when it receives its uh, full 80% of the full fill of the tank, it automatically releases with only a 0.02 cc's of emission. Just a very small is all that comes out. Um, no more do you have to have PPE required, no gloves, no face shields, any of those things. The K-15 makes it very simple and easy for anyone to be able to refill your vehicle. Uh, infrastructure. This is a, a chart that kind of from the Department of Energy uh, of some of the dispensers. I don't think this is even close to all the dispensers that are available to you. So refilling if the bus is on a trip is simple and very easy to do uh, and causes no issues for, for your bus drivers or for your people who are using the buses out on the road. And so uh, if you haven't gone to, this is an incredible website. Please write this down, propane.com. Uh, this website will drive you to anything and everything propane, whether you want to talk about your school buses or paratransit or how to heat your home or how to heat your water or backup power for you through generation, whatever it may be, propane.com is where uh, is a great place to go, but in specifically for school buses, for my business, school transportation will take you to a to the website that has all a whole bunch of testimonials, has a bunch of white papers, has a lot of information for you to be able to uh, learn more about propane and propane auto gas for your school district. And so with that, I would say thank you. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to chat with you and I will pass along to my friend, Derek. Hey, excellent job. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All righty, let's see if we can't make some magic happen. All righty, can you guys see my screen okay? I've got it. Wonderful, very good. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, I know it's exciting to be able to, to see. I always, whenever we do these presentations, you know, our friends at CHS and, you know, Centrosota and the co-ops, I mean, it's exciting because 
you know, this is one of those very few solutions where everybody wins, you know, and a lot of commodities or different, you know, products, there's, you know, something that maybe somebody needs, but it, you know, deteriorates over time or it devalues or depreciates. But I mean, this is a such a phenomenal time in transportation to where the end user can save money, save emissions, you know, improve quality of life while your local, you know, company that's based there in your community offers great services, a clean energy, you know, fuel behind it. And then, um, OEMs like Roush and Ford and Bluebird, you know, and their dealer network uh, get to continue being both environmentally and economically sustainable for their customers. So it's pretty, pretty fun to watch. Um, so again, uh, thank you guys for setting this up. I will keep this uh, relatively brief, but real starting up at about 50,000 feet in the air, I wanted to give a little bit of a, I guess, a scope of where mobility, e-mobility, clean energy mobility has taken place and where Roush has been a part of it with our customer Bluebird and our partner who we've done a lot of work with. Um, so I'm going to jump right in to what we do and who we are. So Roush is a 4,000 plus employee company based worldwide. Our privately held Jack Roush started it in a garage and uh, grew it all the way up into about 80 different facilities in a variety, I think, of over a dozen countries around the globe. And as you can see below, we have a lot of expert services and experience in anything that goes on the roads, off the roads, uh, in the air, out of the atmosphere, uh, on the water and under the water, right? So we get to play a, a really cool space in whether it's something supercharged, um, something that, you know, needs to be propulsed uh, out of the atmosphere, or if it's something that, you know, for example, in entertainment that uh, gets to work with one of the entertainment companies to build uh, modular for roller coasters or animatronics. So we get to dabble in a lot of different spaces, which gives us a lot of experience. One of my favorite quotes that was told to me was the Thomas Edison, which is, hey, you know, Tom, how did you make the light bulb? And he said, well, let me tell you 3000 ways how not to make a light bulb. So we're by no means got it figured out, uh, but we've just got a lot of experience in the space of mobility. And we very proud to be able to partner exclusively with Bluebird and their dealer network to really apply what we've learned to student transportation. So fast forwarding about 12 years later, we've got 50,000 clean energy vehicles on the road. Uh, specifically, the majority of those are propane powered. And we are in our fifth generation of technology that we're putting into commercial and school bus applications. So over 2 billion miles accumulated, and that is in the highest altitude, the lowest altitude, the hottest climates, the lowest climates, and a pretty intense uh, percentage of great inclines. Uh, like for example, Denali National Park, 17% great inlines, climbing mountains and outperforming a lot of the conventional fuel. So very proud of that. Over 3,500 individual fleets that we work with, anything from Pepsi, Bimbo, um, you look at Nestle Waters, uh, you look at uh, student transportation, paratransit, airport, shuttle, municipalities, you name it, right? Anything that needs to be moved on wheels, we go after and uh, we do a really good job of providing an export portfolio of, hey, what's the best energy source for your fleet? So my favorite partnership that I've been very privileged to be able to ride on is the rock and roll Bluebird Roush Ford exclusive partnership since 2012 when we put our very first propane powered bus on the road. Now, we did not invent propane. We did not invent propane into vehicles. Uh, this has been done for over 100 years. But what's changed with this partnership was a high volume OEM engine build. Uh, that's stable, like Ford Motor Company, into a school bus manufacturer that only builds a school bus. They keep their fingers on the pulse of that specific industry. And having touched a lot of different vertical markets in transportation, there is nothing that touches school bus, duty cycle, heavy idle, stop, start, you name it. It's, it's every different state is its own country, it feels like, the way that they handle student transportation. So what Bluebird did is they were running parallel with Ford and Roush and, okay, we've we're very familiar with gasoline. We're very familiar with diesel, but there's got to be other energy sources that are out there, right? We always got to keep pushing the envelope. And what we've landed on uh, is Bluebird now having gasoline, diesel, uh, natural gas, electric, propane. So they're really the, the consultants in the student transportation area. And then they get to look at a district and say, hey, 
based on your application, we feel like this energy source is the best. And propane checks a lot of those boxes. So it is an OEM engine with an OEM bus, all built, purpose built in Fort Valley, Georgia. And propane buses are driven every single place that need, need to be delivered. Unlike some of the other alternative fuels that are out there that need to be uh, put on a tractor or a flatbed, we get to drive them, which we're very proud of. Uh, so every single wheelbase that's possible for a Bluebird Vision, you can get applied for propane, whether that's a 47 gallon tank, a 67, or our most popular, which is 93 gallons. So this just gives you about 400 mile range conservatively. We've seen people get close um, to and over 500, but we like to be conservative in our estimates. So now about 400 mile range for this is pretty comparable what's needed for a student application transportation. And then we also have a, a really cool CAD imagery that shows this is a very simple design. So Jack Roush, you know, keeping that kind of NASCAR mentality of building a highly robust, highly reliable vehicle to keep uptime on the road. But when it does break down, we can get it back up in service on the road as quickly as possible. So not trying to cheapen the $100 million plus investment that Jack has put into Roush Cleantech, but we really just carbon copied what's been done and proven into gasoline technology, right? That same multi-pore fuel sequential injection, fuel pumps in the tank, lines routed the same way, and then injectors just like on a gasoline vehicle. So a lot of our customers actually joke, once they see and look under the hood and see it in action, they're like, this is just clean gasoline. So very, very simple uh, design that we put in here. So not to weigh the vehicle down or overcomplicate it. And also we get rid of all of the diesel after treatment that really plagues the current modern diesel engine today. This just gives you kind of a front and a side look. Uh, catalytic converter, uh, EVAP charcoal canister, very similar to what we're seeing on gasoline vehicles today. We also have a great partner. Um, Drummondville, Quebec is uh, housed a Microbird Girardin. They build a Type A bus, and we also provide that with an E450 chassis and a 41-gallon tank as well. We actually have a great customer in northern Minnesota that has over 300,000 miles on this with all original fuel pumps, fuel uh, management system, powertrain, engine transmission, and still taking kids to and from school today. Pretty exciting. So what's been very fun to watch is the adoption into this, because when you really take a step back and you look, it's very, very complex to be able to propose anything new, especially into a very tight world like the school bus transportation world. We're putting in a brand new engine, Ford, as opposed to a Cummins, a brand new transmission, right? A Torque Shift 6, 6R140, as opposed to an Allison, right? And then we're taking propane, in lieu of diesel. So these are pretty huge monumental um, adjustments to transportation. And as you can see here, since 2012, we've been putting out hockey stick growth and now 63% of everything that Bluebird builds is a non-diesel. 61% of that is a Roush Ford engine, while 2% of that is currently electric and that's growing as well. But pretty cool to be able to see how fast the adoption has taken over. And as you can see, it's not just happening um, in California or in very mild weather climates, it's happening in the most corrosive, heavy duty cycle enriched areas where it gets negative 50 plus Fahrenheit, um, and it also gets crazy wind chill. And what's nice about propane is it prefers the cold, right? Now, does it operate in 120 degree heat on the tarmac, right, in an airport? Absolutely. But we also be able to say, hey, you don't need to plug your propane buses in in negative 40, 50 degree temperature. And we've got some really cool customer testimonials that showcase that exact technology. So as you can see, each one of these birds is a deployment, not just of a, a vehicle, but of an actual deployment. So one of those birds could represent 400 buses or it could represent one bus. Pretty cool. As you can see on this chart, the green birds, we just took the top 100 school district fleets in the country and we ran this data last year, which kind of surprised us at Roush because we're just always in the trenches. Sometimes we don't look up, but um, whether that's Minneapolis, whether that's Boston, whether that's Atlanta, Philadelphia, L.A., right? All of these these uh, uh, cities now are adopting clean burning propane into their fleet. Now, not all of them are going to be 100 percent propane powered, but for their main routes, they are because that's where their biggest return on investment is and their biggest emission reduction is. So pretty exciting to be able to see it's not just rural, but the big cities are taken into their fleet as well. Uh, this just gives you an idea of what Minnesota looks like uh, scattered everywhere. I won't go into detail into all of them, but what we can do now, whether it's a contracted fleet or a district owned fleet or a blend, is we can share referrals 
all across the state to say, hey, talk to your neighbor, ask them how they did it. Who do you know at this district, whether it's Proctor, whether it's um, Kokato, or whether it's Minneapolis, we have a lot of different case studies that are available. Great segue, Crosby Ironton Transportation is probably one of our longest standing customers in the private transportation business. And they tried propane back in the 70s and 80s uh, where the fuel was just as great, but the technology wasn't where it needs to be. And as everything has sh shifted over to electronic control modules, it's it propane only had really a vapor technology base, whereas now it's being built straight from the OEM and calibrated and optimized specifically for propane parameters underneath the hood, which is exciting. So what this means is of these 20,000 vehicles that are on the road, about half of those volume comes from private companies adopting propane into their fleet, which as you can see in that bottom, 67% savings on fuel is astronomical, especially to a small business in a rural community. But I think everybody no matter where you live, can appreciate the savings on it. Negative 41 degrees is the coldest uh, record that they have in Crosby. Uh, parked in, parked outside, no plug-in, and started. Within 15 minutes, they had 70-degree cabin temperature. Um, and then we're also able to say that we're reducing about 96% of the harmful emissions out of that compared to a uh, diesel bus of uh, pre-2024 and older. So this is a district in New Jersey that's 100%. They're smaller, about 33. Um, they're in, uh, in Randolph Township, New Jersey. They started back in 2012. They're one of the very first, and now they're 100% powered by propane. Also, uh, uh, North Penn has a great blend, private and public. They're seeing 75% savings on their fuel. And as you can see in that second to none savings slide, their diesel costs about $3.58 per gallon, but their propane is under a dollar a gallon. They were taking advantage of uh, 36 cent per gallon tax credits that the federal government's had in place for the past 14 years. But also what's great about propane as opposed to, you know, let's say electric is the more you use, the less you pay as opposed to, you know, electric where you, the more you use, the more you pay. So what's really exciting with propane is you can use a volume of scale application that you've been accustomed to with gasoline and diesel, but then you can also lock in at a 12 month, sometimes even 24 month rate, depending on how many gallons that you use, because propane is such a domestic product, we can monitor and buy uh, uh, futures to be able to say, okay, this is going to be consistent over a 12, 24 month period. So uh, moving on just a little bit of where we've seen uh, the future heading. So at Roush, we do a lot of uh, battery electric, hybrid, uh, fuel cell, hydrogen applications. Uh, we feel like it's very cool emerging technology, uh, but the application is uh, a little bit into the future with the pressures you work with and of course the cost and the grid, right? So what we look at currently today is we have gasoline and diesel, which are very familiar. Infrastructure's in place, very low capital cost. But unfortunately, with emission regulations getting tighter and tighter, the cons are getting very complex, which dips into downtime as opposed uh, to the volatility of the fuel price. I don't think anyone wants to bet what the price of gas is going to be a year from now. And honestly, there's no environmental aspect when you go to gasoline and diesel, which, you know, like it or not, whether you're a private or public, uh, any vertical market, but especially in student transportation, Boards are now starting to ask, hey, what are we doing? What are we looking towards, right? Gasoline and, and diesel, while they, they definitely are going to have a place in the future, are we transitioning to something and what fuel do we need to be looking at? And Bluebird uh, sales reps like Chris Wurz and his uh, counterparts can be able to help navigate that. And then on the future side, we have great technologies like electric and fuel cell that are very environmentally friendly, depending on how you generate the electricity. There's a lot of funding that's out there and the low operational costs, you know, when you look at cost per mile. But it's very expensive, right? And the grid is still uh, strained in a lot of areas. And we want to be able to find a fuel like propane that can bridge that gap and still take both the pros of the familiarity with also the pros of the environmental aspect as well. So right now with student transportation, it's getting difficult, right? It used to be take student from point A to point B back safely. Now it's with seatbelts. Now it's with Wi-Fi. Now it's with zero emissions, right? right? There's a lot of asks coming out of the student transportation industry, and we want to be able to alleviate a lot of those concerns as best that we can, and propane achieves that. As I talked a little bit earlier, there's a federal alternative tax credit that's available per gallon. Also, there's costs that can be recouped for a fueling infrastructure as well. It does expire at the end of this year, December 31st, but it's been in place for 14 years. It's one of the very few federal programs that both sides of the aisle can really agree on um, and implement. So we're fully confident that it's going to come back, but we don't base 
our cost of ownership and our total cost of uh, calculations on federal or state subsidies. We look at it as a bonus, but we want to make sure that this stands on its own two feet, and it does. So here's the diesel that we are very accustomed that we've known to to be able to keep it, uh, quote unquote, clean off the tailpipe. It all comes with very expensive costs associated with it. And I think anyone that works on a current modern diesel today can relate to these costs and how it affects. We don't have any of these on the propane power Bluebird Vision. What's very uh, kind of daunting, if you look into the future, we've come a long way since 2006. And right now, that little green slide where it says 2024, we've gone from 0.2 to 0.05. So this is really what's driving all of the ancillary emission devices on a current emission diesel. What's great is we have the life raft, right? Propane, we currently meet the projected 2031. So a lot of our nationwide fleets look at us and breathe a sigh of relief because they say, you know, whether we're operating in California or Iowa or South Carolina, we can now have a future-proof engine that meets both EPA and CARB 50-state approval. And because of our ultra-low NOx near-zero emission certification, we get to tap into some of the same funding that you see for hydrogen and electric. So it's going to get worse. Um, as uh, the law of diminishing return plays into effect, the closer you get to zero, the harder it gets, right? And what's great is we have a very simple catalytic converter and uh, emission system, very similar with what's on your car, and that's going to take us through the next decade. So what I love most about Roush is uh, not that we build a great product, we have a great leader, we have a great culture. It's really our post-sale service and support. We call them our customer success teams. I have a lot of great nicknames for these guys, but a lot of them are Ford Master Techs, um, and we've they've come from uh, even uh, school districts, and they've even come from uh, Fortune 500 fleet companies that say, hey, you guys are really onto something, and I want to be a part of it. So it's kind of our pit crew, whether it's a technical hotline, warranty training, field service agents, uh, we have training agents that go out, service parts catalogs overnight. Um, we track a lot of our, with our CRM Salesforce system, we track a lot of these deployments. Um, we have a lot of telematic products that are going in there and projects to be able to keep and maintain uptime and technical publications that are out there as well. So these are some of our reps that are there. And uh, what's really great is once we see that a propane bus is going into a new customer, whether it's one or a hundred, we then can decide, okay, how do you want to get that service? Let's do training online at your shop, come to Roush, any way that needs to be done. And we work work closely with North Central to be able to make that happen because we don't want to put anything out there on the road that we can't service and support and take care of going forward. So thank you all very much for your time. And uh, we hope that you take a serious look and work with your local Bluebird dealer and co-op with CHS Central Soda. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Mark and Derek. That was awesome. That's a lot of information. Um, uh, very beneficial. I, I run propane on my pickup at work and I love it. It is a fantastic fuel source. So I would encourage anybody to look into it. Um, Chris, I'm gonna, uh, if somebody who's listening would like to uh, actually look at a bus and, and uh, get their hands on one to, to see how it all works, what is the next step for them? Yeah, we do maintain the dealership. We typically maintain some uh, stock inventory for demo purposes so uh, just get a hold of us here and we'll get uh, either a demo ride and drive set up or just come up with a vehicle uh, real simple to do and um, that's on the table pretty much all the time different people have different specifications they need in their buses um, we try to keep a few around that will work for for most situations and uh, can also reference some customers that have vehicles in the field now so we can help out any way possible Fantastic. And then can you talk a little bit about any um, um, incentives through Minnesota Propane? Yeah, uh, yeah. Minnesota Propane Association has offered some uh, rebate incentives on new bus purchases or new vehicle purchases for the last couple of years, I think. I think is a current rebate 2,500. I believe that's correct. I've got to, I've got to see see what the, the most most recent one is, but um, that's a, it's a pretty simple process. It's a, a matter of, of of the contact with the propane association, uh, letting them know what you're you're purchasing for vehicles. Um, it's not a lot of red tape to it, and uh, there's not a lot of requirements as far as uh, paperwork. It's just real, very simple that way. It's not like some of the other funding things that we've seen out there that are very complicated and somewhat of a lottery. This has been a, a very easy one to work with. So um, that's on the table this time, and uh, that was renewed last year. It's something they've been doing for a few years now, ongoing. Fantastic. All right. 
Well, hopefully these presentations have got everyone's gears turning a little bit in, in the future of their bus fleets and what, where they want to go in, in moving forward. Um, on the last screen, I would like to leave some contact information for Chris and myself. Uh, you're welcome to contact me with any questions regarding propane dispensers or delivery of propane. And, um, and then contact Chris to uh, set up that ride along where you can go see the bus and how it works. So I would um, like to thank you all for attending today. I hope this found this very worth your time and we look forward to working with you in the near future.